Okay, so I'm going to do a quick video of how I'm going to set up my kayak for uh, the 2023 kayak tournament season. Uh, people have seen my stuff online and have asked me about how I've got things set up with my trailer, etc. So I thought I'd do a quick uh, walk around and just kind of show you how I set it up. So it's the Old Town Autopilot 136. Uh, full disclosure, I won this kayak as part of uh, being a member in a kayak turn uh, club a couple years ago. So this will be my second year in this uh, kayak, so I've gotten to know it pretty well. But I made some modifications over the winter, and I'm uh, really looking forward to the 2023 year. So we'll kind of start off with uh, which trailer I'm using. As you can see, this is a ride-on trailer. It's a really lightweight aluminum trailer. Uh, it holds the 136. I, again, I'll just, as you can see, I have some PVC tubes. Uh, I make that, I find that really easy uh, to load and unload. Uh, my previous trailer, which I had a year ago as a jet ski trailer, it had horizontal bunks as opposed to these vertical bunks and just was uh, not as easy to load and unload. And I do wet launch uh, for my truck. Uh, but again, the ride on trailer. Now this is the Rough Sport and they just recently came out with this new uh, box that you could put on it, this rack, which gave, gave me this upper level. I really wanted an upper deck, if you will. Uh, I had it on my old trailer. I really liked it so I could transport a few things, uh, a few more things. They just came out with it. It's a bolt-on. Uh, again, you can kind of see uh, how it goes on and it, uh, how it's holding everything up. I think it holds like 350 pounds, which I will never get, um, but it was super easy. It took me about a half an hour um, and used mostly the original, well, I used all the original holes that were there for their previous uh, crossbars. Um, but yeah, yeah, I really like what I came out, what they came out with and uh, looking forward. I haven't towed with it yet, so uh, still got to figure that out. And as you can see on the upper deck, I do run uh, a Thule Frontier box. It's an old box I got off of Facebook Marketplace. I think I spent like a hundred bucks on it. Uh, this will hold all of my rods and anything that's uh, pretty long. So I've got my flags in there. I've got my catch board in there. I've also got some lights. And uh, these are just under counter lights. They're rechargeable. They come off. You can see I can just twist it and they come off so I can recharge them. They operate a couple of different ways. I can push them, but it's also got uh, a remote control so I can actually change the colors and turn them on, as you can see, and then change colors if I'd like, depending on how bright I want it to be. It does have red, green, blue and white. And then I can turn them all off with the remote as well. So that should give me, and I've tested it in the garage with the light off, but all my rods will go in there. I usually carry six rods when I'm fishing, but all the rods will go in here without any problems. Uh, I also carry uh, some other parts underneath here. For example, I've got uh, a four-way for flat tires in the event. Um, yeah, so that's my Thule box that I put up there. And then I've also got a Harbor Freight uh, Hallmaster basket that I put on here. And I put that on there just for some extra stuff. Um, there's no way to mount this box, which I had on my old trailer uh, on the tongue, so I wanted to put it up here. And again, it's lockable just like the Thule box is, or the, yeah, the Thule box. It also has lights, as you can see, with the remote. And again, these are all rechargeable. And I can change the colors. As you can see, just like the other ones are the same lights. And turn them off and the remote fits in here. And then I put things in like my um, life jackets and my wetsuit or my, or my dry suit, et cetera, all in here. Um, and that's what I keep in there in that box. And again, so it's completely lockable for storage. And it's giving me, I have a little bit more room. If I want to, I can take that off and carry another kayak up there, et cetera. So that's kind of the way this deck works, this upper deck, and that's why I wanted this box. Uh, I'm really happy with the ride on tra uh, trailer. It tows really well. Uh, I've had it to speeds um, 70, 80 miles an hour for hours at a time, and I have not had any problems with it. Just keep your bearings greased like you would any other trailer. So now we'll just start talking around about the uh, kayak itself. Uh, so again, it's an autopilot uh, 136. It's a 2022 version. Um, so there's the motor and so here's your hatch that goes in the middle. Uh, I don't use this hatch for much uh, other than some storage 
Uh, I have a, a net bag that I have in here, and basically it's got a bow. Pull this out. It's got a bow uh, rope that's inside of it, and I also carry a spare prop, if you can see that. There's a spare prop that I keep in there. So that allows me when I'm uh, at back home, I can just hang that net bag over the side to let that uh, uh, rope dry out if it got wet, and then I can keep it with me, my bow rope, and I, I just tie that off to the front there. Uh, I do have it registered, as you can see, for the motor in the state of Oregon. And you can see I've got some bow lights. I'll show that uh, a bit more in the future. Uh, inside on the deck, I do have four of the uh, auto drain plugs, and I've got one old golf ball sitting in the middle. Uh, I found out after the first year that uh, I was dropping a lot of uh, lures, plastic kind of thing, down those two holes there by the seat. So I wanted to get those self-draining uh, plugs in, but I left the other ones open um, just so the water can drain. I do fish the Columbia River quite a bit. While I don't take on a lot of water, it does rain here, and that's where most of my water comes from, and I want it to drain out. Uh, you can see I've got the, uh, a little bag on the front that holds like things like sunglasses. Uh, you can see I've got a sharpener there. Uh, I've got some gloves and stuff in there, and I'll open that up in just a second. Um, but just kind of walking around the side here, I'm going to start with the starboard side. So you can see where my paddle is. I keep it there even when I tow uh, because I use straps and it holds it on. Uh, this cup holder here that you see uh, serves a couple purposes. Number one, if it's summertime, uh, which is when I do most of my fishing, it's basically just a garbage collector. I can put in a water bottle if I want to, one of the bigger ones. But mostly in the wintertime, I put in a propane heater, like one of those Mr. Buddy golf cart heaters, and that uh, flips right in there without any problems. And I'm right-handed, so I put my rod holder on the right-hand side. So it's a Yak Attack rod holder. It's got the quick release, and I can move it anywhere. Uh, this is just to hold some tools that I use for, on, that I tether, um, and just click that um, with some carabiners onto that. Uh, moving to the back, uh, I have uh, the, the box that comes with it. And then inside of that is just kind of the miscellaneous stuff, so things like uh, registrations. Uh, some spare parts, etc. That's what's all inside of there. Uh, there's my uh, Yak Power puck that holds, that lights everything up. And you can see that's lit up. And I'll go through that here a little bit more. Actually, we'll go ahead and turn that on now. So from there, <clears throat> I've got it set up to where I have uh, on port number one is my electronics. Um, port number two would be the interior lights. Then I have my bow, my stern, and then my midship lights as well. Uh, excuse me, this would be my two are the uh, auxiliary ports, and I'll show those to you in a bit. Uh, so I can go ahead and put these in, just so we can go through. I'll go ahead and light them all up. You can see the midship. You can see it light up here. So I've got two lights back here, and I've also got two lights up front here. So you can see how those come on uh, with that light. Uh, you can see the bow lights, so the right, uh, the left side I mean, the right side has the green, and of course the left side has the red, so those are wired up. Uh, moving on back, you can see, um, so this, this ammo can you see stuck between the, the black pack and the uh, seat is my um, GLS-10 for LiveScope, and I'll open that up here in a little bit. Uh, so there's the black pack, so it's the 16 by 16, so you can kind of get a feel for what uh, the space looks like. So again, I've got an ammo can here that's snug up against it. I also rerouted these wires, um, excuse me, shock cords, so that I can keep that without messing with it too much. And then just the tension on it here keeps it from, from sliding around when I, and I don't take it off when I tow. Uh, in the back here, you'll see the, um, for the flag light. So that just goes right in there to get it switch operated up front uh, for my 360 light. that back in there. Um, so that's kind of the back side. And then we'll move around over here to the starboard side. And so again, so you can kind of see uh, a different view. And so uh, real quick, we'll show uh, what's inside the backpack. So I've kind of done some modifications to myself. One of the first things I've done is I've uh, lit it up. So inside here, I have a USB port that I can plug in right here to the side. You can see that that is already on. So when I plug that in, 
it lights up the inside. Which again, I've, I've run everything with the blue lights because uh, it just seems to be complementary to uh, the color of the, the kayak itself. So in the black pack, I usually carry 36 to 3700 packs. Uh, I did put this extra bag on the lid because I can, I can close that down uh, even with the 3700 and it fits in there. And I've got things like tools and extra cables, uh, cords, etc. Some gloves because it opens up in the middle as well. It's a waterproof bag. Um, so yeah, that's what I keep in my black pack. Uh, I really like it. It's a 16 by 16. Holds everything I need plus more. Then I have, like I said, this ammo can. Let me move the seat out of the way here a little bit. So this has the GLS, and inside of that is the GLS 10 and all the cables. And I also carry a spare battery. That's a Dakota Lithium 10 amp hour. But um, the power cable actually comes out and goes straight to my battery underneath, which is down here. So I have down in this pack, into this, I have a, a Chin 20 amp hour, and then so it runs to the Yak Power um, box down here. All the ports come out that goes up here to the switch. And then I have uh, port one has a V cable on it. Maybe I can show that to you. Yeah, so you can see it's got a Y cable right here. There's the cable I was looking for. That was the power cable. So I had this Y cable here that goes to the uh, Garmin 73SV as well as the black pack. So I can power everything off of that one battery. And then I still, like I said, I, show, I showed you I carried a spare battery uh, just in case. Uh, seat, so again, I have another bag. So again, this is just a, something off of Amazon. It's uh, basically a, a bag that you use for walkers. And in it, I carry different pull, tools. Uh, I always have my remote in here, um, just again, just different parts, hand tools, that kind of a thing uh, that I carry with me. That way I never forget them. So I'm going to kind of dig underneath here a little bit. So on this particular mount here, which is on uh, the handle, this is where my remote goes. So it just screws right into the top and it's always right there uh, at a thumb's pace or from away. And I can uh, speed up and adjust and do everything and I've gotten really good accustomed to utilizing the remote by not having it tethered to my neck. I don't like having things tethered to my neck. As you can see, I have uh, a pull for the uh, live scope. And then so, uh, again, I haven't towed with this yet, but this is the, the makeup that I've gone with. On this particular RAM mount, it serves twofold. One is it's going to be uh, the rod holder, the, the, the holder for the live scope as I travel down the road. And then when I get to my destination when I'm out on the water, I'll take that off and I have another um, clamp that I use for my phone. Hopefully I can find it here. Anyway, so it's just a claw. It's a ram mount claw that I use to put in my phone. There it is right there. So you can kind of see. So I'll take off the claw, the claw here and then I'll just put in the ram mount flip it around and then it'll sit here so my, my cell phone um, can both charge and it's uh, within uh, fingers reach. And then you can see uh, the Garmin, let me go ahead and show you that it does power on. So it does power on there, you can see. So this is the live scope, so again, every, all the wires are running straight back to the ammo can and run right up here, there's plenty of room that uh, when I drop that down, it actually even gets more slack on it. Uh, and I don't carry the Garmin, uh, I don't keep the head unit on when I'm traveling. I'll take it off and I'll swing it down inside so it's out of the way uh, of all this upper wire here, or uh, upper bars. As you can see then, we do have pan optics there, so everything's all set up, ready to go. Again, I've not had it on the water yet since I put the pan optics in, but I am looking forward to doing that here in the next couple days. Uh, it's rainy and wet here in the Pacific Northwest, so that's how that works out. So that's how I've got my kayak and my trailer set up for 2023. One thing, a couple things I forgot to show, and one is uh, I mentioned being able to charge my phone, and you can see I have a port right there next to my seat. Let me see if I can get underneath here a little bit. Get you up here. 
and you can see that that's powered there as well and I can turn it on and off. Um, off. So I've got uh, some quick ports there. And the other thing I wanted to show you real quick is the, uh, uh, the way I had the transducer mounted. So I'm going to flip this around. Hopefully this comes out okay. So there what I have is the uh, Yak Hobby uh, GT uh, transducer mount. And as you can see from the side here, if you look, that does not drop below the uh, front of the kayak. You can't see, you can see that transducer is tucked up underneath there. Now I had a first version of the Yak Hobby that I really liked. Unfortunately, I broke it um, dropping this off the trailer one time. But uh, this new version, I really like it tucks it up even higher. I'm not even worried about that transducer hitting anything on the ground uh, when I dry, uh, hit the dry land or whatever, um, for whatever reason. So again, here, here's my 2023 um, tournament kayak setup with my trailer. Uh, again, it's a, a ride-on trailer with their new um, utility box that goes around the top and it gives me all the setup I need. Again, any questions, don't feel, don't hesitate to ask them and I'll answer the best I possibly can.